everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Leanne Russo Liddell, Associate Broker and Realtor with Ocasio Realty. And today I am here with Wendy Johnson, who is the Executive Director of the Justice Center. And the Justice Center was established in 2006, and it is the only resource and day center that is exclusively for seniors ages 55 and up that are experiencing homelessness. So I'm very excited, um, Wendy, to talk to you about um, your nonprofit. So tell me a little bit about it and, and how you got started. Well, um, I am standing on the shoulders of giants, people who came before me. Um, I joined the team in 2018. Uh, it was a dream of a local Methodist pastor who looked around and saw a lot of homeless elderly and wondered why. Mm -hmm. um, and he interviewed uh, over a dozen seniors who were either experiencing homelessness or had transitioned out to find out what the barriers were. And that was the beginning of Just a Center. And, um, he was here until he got reassigned in 2015, and there was another executive director, and now there's me, and I'm a okay. little bit more crazy. <laughs> so um, it's, it's really an amazing place. I, I come to this from a, a long history of, of working in, um, working with the poor. I, mm -hmm. I, I just feel uh, called to do that, mm -hmm. and I believe that helping one person helps all of us, kind of the starfish analogy. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't save everybody, but I can certainly throw that one back in the ocean and let Absolutely. them live. And so Justice Center is really organically um, like a senior center. We have activities. Oh, great. Uh, we have lockers so that they don't have to schlep their stuff around, okay. that they can keep their medicine safe, their ID. We have a fire safe. They can check in their documentation and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, we have a housing manager who works with every single one of our members to continue that journey back to housing. And unfortunately, not everybody will achieve a return to housing. And while no one, no one picks true homelessness as that it's not a choice, right. um, we as humans can adapt. And so some of our folks who are chronically homeless have just learned to adapt to their life. And okay. those are the hardest ones to work with. About 25, 30% of them, 48% the, uh, of the seniors uh, who are coming to Just Up for the first time are first time homeless. And that's hmm. really the emerging crisis. Um, Absolutely. And Phoenix has a very high senior ratio. We have like three age groups. You know, we have the zero to 20 in mm -hmm. one big chunk. Then we have 20 to 62 and then 62 and up, and they're all about the same size. And hmm. so, you know, we've got a lot of folks that are going to be aging into um, their retirement with very little planning. 30% yeah. of most people entering retirement are solely dependent on Social Security for their income. Whew. And that is not a livable amount of money. Doesn't right. matter who you are, it's just not there. Yeah. So absolutely. we address, you know, we start with Maslow's. You know, it's like, okay, are you clean? Are you fed? Do you have water? Do you know that someone yeah. cares about you? Are you safe? And we try to move them through Maslow's hierarchy to self determination. You know, our okay. goal is to make sure that folks have the opportunity. They're grown adults. They should be able to do what they want to do, but Absolutely. sometimes they don't know what's available. So we work on that with them as well. Okay. Okay. Um, how many folks do you think you serve in a given year? We're at about 1,200 uh, okay. unique individuals. Um, okay. Like I said, 25 to 30% of them are chronic homeless. There are folks who are what I call um, homeless tourists. They have. They will save up enough money to come here in the winter mm -hmm. and, and be here, and then they'll snowbird back to Portland or Denver mm -hmm. or Chicago or wherever they're from for the the summer months to get out of here. Um, and that's a real small percentage in that chronically homeless area. Most folks are 
usually when a senior becomes homeless, they usually stay within a mile of where they used to live hmm. until okay. they get arrested or the police intervene or they get hurt. And then they'll relocate them down here where, by the Human Services Campus where all the homeless yep. services in downtown are. Right, right. Okay. Um, so if folks are, are interested in getting involved for helping um, the, who's, the, the Justice Center, what do, you, what, what do you have available for them if they want to help out? Wow, we have a combination of crazy that's fun to do here. So we okay. are, um, we're ready to have volunteers back on property. Um, we okay. shut down volunteer access, uh, and we're looking for folks who want to commit three hours a week, nothing mm -hmm. major, but you can come in and work behind the scenes till you feel comfortable and help us with donated goods and distribution. We deliver 100 um, and 50 bags of groceries to seniors who were formerly homeless that are now in housing. And we oh, do wellness great. and welfare checks. So we have amb volunteer ambassadors that do that. So we okay. have folks that come in and make grocery bags. And then we have folks who come in and pick them up and deliver them. And so we have those kind of opportunities. Um, we have some special skill needs. We, we're developing a program called the PATH Guide. Mm -hmm. So you're on a path to housing. Mm -hmm and need a guide who's going to help you keep track, you know, mm -hmm. um, fill out applications. Some of our seniors don't have the dexterity, um, maybe aren't literate enough to fill mm -hmm. out a 27-page apartment application, and I'm not kidding. Um, because wow. when you get into subsidized housing, you have to prove all of these things and fill out all of these forms and go get all these tests and stuff. And so we're developing um, a program for individuals to come in and say, okay, I've got this group of 10 folks that I'm going to check in on once a week. And okay. whether they're here or not is up to the individual. But the, okay. the volunteer has an opportunity to see them. Um, and then we're always, you know, just like every other nonprofit, we're fundraising and donation raising, you know. Um, we're headed into summer. Water is life. Um, yep, that was going to be my question of, you know, uh, for water distribution has got to be incredibly tough in the summer to to get enough we, to get uh, it to the right people. Yeah, we have, um, we're part of the Heat Relief Network, and so we have an open bottle <laughs> okay. policy here. Um, we, we bought to, a donor funded us to buy two of ice cream coolers. Those like oh. blue bunny coolers. Yep, yep, yep. We put one in there and, and so it'll freeze overnight. And so then we can give out a combination of frozen, chilled, or room temperature, indoor right. temperature water um, to folks. So when they later in the afternoon we start getting frozen water because then as it melts it's still drinkable. You drinkable, know? yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise it's like getting in your car and taking a chug out of that after you have <laughs> been there for a while, you know. Hundred and ten degree is not I know. I don't I, I don't know what we did before like metal insulated water bottles. Like I'm trying to remember just like, oh yeah, you just like burn your mouth and you're like, But I'm thirsty, yeah, I'm no. gonna do it anyway. So yeah. Yeah. When so I was that, a kid, pre all that, we drank out of people's hose bits. You know, yeah. so we'd go into their yard, we'd put on their water, and we'd let it run until it wasn't quite so hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. I remember doing that, too. Um, well, it sounds like you guys have a lot of um, good opportunities for potential volunteers or, or folks that are maybe interested in donating, um, you know, to, to the mission. Um, wh what are some of, of the goals for the next year? So uh, the looming addictions has had us scrambling since last August, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, because they keep pushing that down the road. Um, yep. So we've been working really hard with our seniors who are in housing to make sure they can retain housing. We've, okay. you know, we've spent this period of time getting them hooked up with resources that they needed, um, it, you know, additional care, negotiation with their landlords, because the retention of housing helps prevent this cycle of homelessness. You know, of course. Once I've, you know, once I've done something, it's easier for me to do it again. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's 
I never had surgery till I was like 50 years old and mm-hmm. and then since then I've had a milk, you know, it's like, no big deal, you know, yeah, put me under. And sure. so it's the same thing with any kind of trauma like that is once you've experienced it, you begin to think that's the most natural alternative. So we're working on homelessness prevention along the way um, okay. because because that's really important. Um, we're also, we have a couple of new programs that that we're focusing in on on a pilot level. So we okay. learned while we were working with our seniors about um, their uh, eviction risk, we asked, mm-hmm. we just threw a couple of random questions into the, the list we gave the social worker. And one of them was, um, do you have a PCP, primary care okay. physician? Primary care, yep. And when you don't feel good, how do you get to the hospital? Mm. How do you get care? We learned that 40% of our seniors have never established a PCP relationship, so they're treating symptoms. Yep. Um, and because they, most of them don't have transportation, they are utterly dependent on 911 to get to the hospital. Yep. So we're working with a number of other groups and agencies trying to put together some transition ideas of how to help them. And then we're, we put a telehealth portal in here in our nurses' clinic so that they could have telehealth visits and learn how to do that. Nice. Um, because, because health maintenance is a big part of growing old. You know, we, of course, we, yeah. You know, I, I'm old and falling apart, so I need all the help I can get. Um, of course, we're in the cycle of vaccine and exposure and COVID and all that kind of stuff. So we're working closely with those groups. Um, our biggest concern right now, again, is heat. Um, yep. It was an extraordinarily hot summer. Um, more homeless people died on the streets this summer than in the history of Phoenix hmm. or the Valley, Mexico County. And of them, almost... 40%, maybe 50, were over the age of 55. Wow. And they were in very, they were, the most deaths happened in three or four pockets in the valley. Mm-hmm. And so I'm working with my board on how can we do an outreach into those areas so where the problem. most deaths are experienced to find out why. Sure. Why are they there? What, what is, what, because we know there's no services there that we know yeah. of, right? So, what is making this a large gathering place, you know? And then how do we help them access services without displacing where they're at? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you you can't pack up your tent in your cart and get on a bus or the light rail. And, you know, right. it's, it, it's hard to be homeless. And the other is the stigma of being homeless. Um, yep. A lot of our folks uh, are, they use the word invisible. To describe mm-hmm. themselves. So I've been talking a lot publicly about um, being help precedes trust and trust yeah. precedes hope. Mm-hmm. So one of the ways that we can help is, you know, I throw a little cooler in my my SUV mm-hmm. all summer long and I keep semi chilled bottles of water in there and I have a little card that tells them the numbers they can call to get help. Mm-hmm. You know, and a big shirt of white socks, you know, I get by two socks. And I hand those out, I'll park, if I see a bunch of homeless folks, I'll park and go give it to them. Because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. You know, Absolutely. everything, like like the vaccine, the vaccine registration is all online. So if right. I don't have online access, how do I register? How do you, right. And I don't have a phone, I don't have an address, I don't have all these things, so I'm completely lost. And so we're trying to figure out how to get engaged with seniors because they're most likely to be within a mile or so of where they became homeless. Mm -hmm. So finding them early will help turn that around. The longer we are in homelessness, the more likely we're going to adapt or we're going to get abused or hurt or uh, sick. And so, you know, in, in some ways, and I don't mean, I'm an elderly person, so I can speak with accuracy on this, but not in a negative way. We're like recycled teenagers. The mm-hmm. older we get, 
you know, we're left alone, we'll get in trouble, we'll trust our friends before we'll trust, you know, the media or, you know, sure. we'll, you know, so, and, and sex, drugs, and rock and roll continue yep. into our life, and a lot of us grew up in the 70s, so we live that life, you know, and sure. so, in sure. some ways, especially when we become homeless, become more like teenagers, and we need more help and guidance. We need a trusted place to go. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing Justice Center does is, you know, we only let people in who have gone through our intake program. We, okay. um, you, you have to be 55 to take mm-hmm. to come in and use our services and get a meal and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we have showers. Um, we have showers. We do, you know, Maslow's level, but also we have computer stations and all this kind of stuff to help them reconnect and get done what they need to get done. Sure. Um, jobs and stuff like that. And so by eliminating younger folks from that, everything can move at a little bit slower pace and you don't feel embarrassed asking what's a browser, you know. Right. How do how do I do this? Anything mm-hmm. like that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we're cool. you know, that's one of the gifts that's been present at Justice Center since the beginning is this sense of um, this is my place and mm-hmm. we have and our seniors are very respectful of each other um, uh, and and of what we do. I mean they they care. Um, sure. You know, it's not without its adventures. <laughs> you know, I'm sure. you know, people are people, you know. I mm-hmm. I was in Smart Pain the other day and somebody was flipping out and I thought, Wow, it's like being at the office. You know <laughs> <laughs> it happens anywhere to anyone. Um Absolutely. but we have an excellent record of safety and health and and uh, a sense of belonging that really helps us uh, move our seniors through. We place about three hundred people a year in housing. That's we great. Have, um, that's down the road someday. We want to be a housing provider, uh, but right now we're we're scooping them up and trying to get them into the existing systems and mm-hmm. figure out what why is housing hard for some of our folks. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of it's older older men who have either been in the military, um, career military have. Uh, been married their whole life, have been maybe incarcerated for a majority of their life, mm-hmm. they have no life skills. They don't right. know how to eat, cooking, cleaning, planning. No, no idea. No idea. Yeah. And so we're gonna we're moving out of that age group slowly, you know, as we all age, you know. But but there's new barriers that come up. And so that's what we're trying to do. It's, it's also a racial equity thing. Um, yep. The majority of our seniors are are Caucasian, um, but they're easier to place than mm-hmm. people of color or foreign born. And so we're constantly mm-hmm. working for equity and for balance um, and to be advocates for those who can't advocate for themselves. Um, Absolutely, you know, we're not here to win anything. We just want right. to get them into housing. You know, I'm, I I have no desire to be a trailblazer. What I have a desire to do is see people get back into housing, get control of their life, and to live their life out healthier than what they have been. Absolutely. And, so, you know, and then one of the things we were just talking about this week was, you know, it might be time for us to reintroduce. Um, a 12-step group here um, mm-hmm. to bring in a NA or AA person who's good at that and, and sure. have them start working with folks because that's a life skill and it's also a coping skill. A lot of absolutely. Folks, a lot of folks who are emotionally damaged come from even if they don't have an addiction or a propensity, they may come from a family that had addiction issues and that mm-hmm. has molded choices, responses, you know, we're more likely if we've been in an abusive relationship, we're more likely to return to a new abusive relationship. And so we right. it's so important we break those cycles. Yeah. To give them an opportunity. We can't make anybody do anything, but we can give them those opportunities. That's wonderful, Wendy. Um I really appreciate you sharing all of that with me. 
Um, and I'm excited to, you know, learn a little bit more just on my own, um, you know, digging around with what I can do to, to try to help as well. Um, affordable housing, housing placement, um, has always been something that's been, um, something that I've been passionate about. And I don't think that there's enough, enough resources for people. And like you said, you know, they, they don't know what they don't know. Um, there's so no one eight hundred homeless number. You know, right. two one one Arizona is that's the number I give out more than any other is for people to call two one one just like nine one one. It's been complete. They have they have incredible resources. Oh, will right. connect you with the right people. You know, okay. anybody in crisis don't have to be homeless. If, okay. You know, if you're Fighting with your utility company, go to 211. If you're looking for daycare, go to 211. It's an incredible resource for, and it's all of the nonprofits in the Valley. We lift and support that so that we, there's a one-stop shop for you. And it's on the web, and you can call and talk to a human being 24 hours a day. So it's really awesome. That's awesome. I actually didn't know about that, so I will definitely start. I have um, the app on my phone. <laughs> nice. I'll definitely start um, start touting that a little bit and, and letting people know. Um, yeah. My my last question for you, Wendy. Um, you know, is there anything kind of going on or coming up um, that you guys are working on that you want you know other community members to to know about? Um. There's a couple little things. One is um, we're headed for another cold snap, as always, in March. And so uh, we're going to be doing a coat, coat distribution. So if folks okay. have new or gently used clean coats, um, we would gladly take those, uh, adult okay. sizes only. Um, the other is that um, as we're moving into the heat, water, 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 water. So if folks want to either contribute to water purchasing, um, we have a great vendor. Um, you know, it's like you can buy it at Costco really cheap, but it costs twice as much to have it delivered. Right. It's like three hundred dollars to have it delivered. I'm like, right. oh my god. So you know, so we found another place to do that that's really affordable, and so we're able to purchase it at a okay. really low cost and be able to get it out. Um, and uh, and and think about think about what you can do as a neighbor. You know, there's good reason to be afraid of homeless people. You know, there's a reason they're homeless. The flip side is most of the early violence against homeless people is from people in housing. Hmm. People get beat up, they get spit at, they get things thrown on them because mm-hmm. it's Get out of the neighborhood. So mm-hmm. think about what you're seeing in your neighborhood and say, hey, should I make up some sack lunches? Mm-hmm. And take them to the park and say, hey, guys, I have sack lunches for you. Put them on a table and walk away. Don't, don't, yeah. you know, don't solve their problems. Don't, you know, what I try to tell people is remember, you are not the first person who found out this person is homeless. Sure. You're not the first person that I'm telling my story to, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm, um, I worked in the third world for 18 years, and one of the things I learned really quickly was, you, because nobody volunteers to give you new shoes or nobody comes to you and says, hey, it looks like you need a haircut. Let's get your haircut and colored, right? right? So you have to ask for everything. You have to mm-hmm. ask and ask and ask. And so um, we get good at the ask. And so mm-hmm. we... You, can't solve every ask. What we need to do is ask back. So you can ask big questions like, where are you sleeping tonight? Do you feel safe? Have you checked in at any of the the uh, intake areas? You know, and also, mm-hmm. because really it may be that they're in a rut um, and it may be that they're, they're not interested in any of that and so mm-hmm. you can move on. But it doesn't cost any anything extra to do something kind. Um, Absolutely. Because it, it comes back in in multitudes. So mm-hmm. we strongly encourage safe. You know, I never, I'm fearless just because of how I live my life. But, um, and my family hates that I'm now. But, you know, <laughs> I don't go someplace I've never been. I don't walk into a group of people I've never seen before and go, hey, 
book, I cash, you know, I don't do right. stuff like that, you know. So, you know, but I if I give a, a pair of socks and a McDonald's five dollar gift card to McDonald's, I know that person at least is going to have clean feet, clean dry feet and something to eat today. And right. if they sell that to somebody else uh, so they can buy cigarettes because they're addicted to tobacco. Well, they needed that, and I can't judge what their need up is. Sure. You know, mine's, mine's Cheetos. You know, if I, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would sell my Mickey D's card for a bag of Cheetos, you know. So I get that. You know, I get sure. the addiction level and the need. And um, the other thing we do here, and we try to encourage groups that want to help us, is – Think about something. Everybody wants to bring granola bars and healthy stuff. Well, guess what you don't get when you're homeless? Sweets and treats. Mm -hmm. Just nobody wants to, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to spend my $5 and buy a bag of, you know, Easter candy. Well, you know what? It's huge. You know, we'll, we'll put out a bag of candy and people are like, oh, my gosh, these are my, and it starts a conversation. It starts them talking about memories and, you sure. know, I never thought so about that. But... Thing, the little hearts and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So, you know, think about when you're working with groups that, not just my seniors at Justice Center, but anybody who's experiencing poverty, who's experiencing a disconnection, um, think about what you could do for yourself that they can't do for themselves and then mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. um, sanitary supplies for younger women. Um, we know how hard that is, you know. Yep. There's just all these things that we just take for granted. And yeah, because we can go to the store and get it. Exactly, exactly. And, in fact, we, we learned a hard lesson about going to the store was we had a group who was giving out $5 CVS gift cards, which, in theory, seems like a great idea. Sure. Until they go into the CVS, first of all, are they going to be able to be in there? Because CV, the nearest CVS to a homeless encampment may have already told them you can't come in. Right, you can't, right. Um, but the other is, is that they don't know what's taxable, what's not. I was going to say, they know they have $5. So they get mm. to the register and it's five twenty-five, and they don't have the quarter. Or right. worse, it's four seventy five and they have twenty five cents sitting on a card that they're gonna lose in ten seconds. Right. You know, after they were why well, carry that around. And so we really encourage folks to think through um like what makes sense that you wanna give to someone. Sure. Um, one of our groups changed to uh putting a five dollar bill in a Christmas card instead of a five dollar gift card. Mm. And we videoed some of the responses from the members that were opening them, and they were shocked at what that having a five dollar bill in your hand when you have nothing is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's got to just be a different feeling than uh, than a gift card. It's it's got more. Um, I almost feel like it's got more permanence. Yeah, I know money. I don't. Right. I may not know gift cards, but I know money. I know money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I get to decide where I spend it. I don't have to go to McDonald's or CBS, you know, or right. that kind of thing. You know, and so there, it, incre it increases a person's autonomy. And so all of those things help us be better neighbors when we get back into housing. Um, Absolutely. And so, you know, that's part of it, too, is how do we, be, how do we keep our life skills up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Wendy. Yeah. So much. Um, once again, everybody, I am Leanne Russo Liddell, Associate Broker and Realtor with Ocasio Realty. And today I spoke with Wendy Johnson, who is the Executive Director of the Justa Center, um, the Justice Center, and um, all of her contact information and information on her nonprofit will be um, below this video. So go ahead and um, take a look. And I hope um, that everyone watching will. Um, do something and uh, be a good neighbor today. So thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you.